G'day everyone, another Turning Tuesday is upon us. This week, Sid from Sid's Repurposing has decided to throw down the gauntlet. Noticing I tend to prefer my roughing gouge over any other tool when it comes to pens, he decided to put me out of my comfort zone and I've accepted the challenge. So this week, I am doing a practice pen and this was the result. I hope you enjoy. So for this week, I chose to grab out what I thought was just going to be a generic piece of Tasmanian oak. And you'll see towards the end, there's actually some interest that comes out of this. Now, as I said, I am not comfortable with a skew on the pens. I've tried it before and I have made pen blanks absolutely vanish in a fraction of seconds. But as I said, I have stepped up to the challenge and I am doing this very gently. Typically, the reason it vanishes is because I'm going into aggressive and so I decided to slow down. I've also adjusted my angle of the skew. Uh, so I discussed it with Sid and he told me what angle he's running on his. So I got mine as close as possible and trying to get in there with a nice finish. So I'm just doing a quick rough first and then I'll come back and do an actual shape on the pen. As I said, this is Tasmanian oak. It is reclaimed. It's from Thor's Hammer in Canberra. I picked up a pallet of wood a long, long time ago and this is just one of those pieces of wood. Thor's Hammer is a Canberra-based joinery and these are joinery offcuts. Um, so, as you'd expect, they are high quality to begin with, but they are kiln dried. When I ordered this, it was part of the firewood pallet and I told them what I was going to use it for and they said, we got you. We'll get you a pallet of joinery offcuts that have already had nails removed. You'll notice here, I will now dip my tool rest a tiny little bit. That was maybe half a centimeter. I just noticed I was getting a little too high on the skew or more to the point, the skew was getting a little too high and it was about to start passing over the top. So I dipped it a little bit so that I could get back in and have some clean cuts. And this was also part of my strategy of not going too aggressive, keeping the tool high-ish to try and not allow myself to go too aggressive. This is less about the tool control on the tool rest and more about the me control. So you'll notice I'm going to put these into a barrel first and then I'm going to turn them down. As you know with my streamlines I like to have something to grip onto on the front of the pen. I don't like to have the super skinny. So I have got the bulbous center and for me that's just because I like holding it that way. The feedback I'm also receiving is that a lot of other people also like it that way. The top of the pen, on the other hand, I do like to reduce as much bulge as possible because I don't want that pen clip getting obstructed or adding any additional wear onto the finish as it's going into and out of a pocket or on a binder or however you may choose to use that clip. Right now, I'm just running my fingers over the ends to see how close I am to the bushings. You may notice I'm also using a mandrel again. This is a new mandrel. Um, it's purely for pens like this. The ones that have the bushings that fit inside, I will try and do turning in center, so between centers. However, ones like the Streamline where the seven millimeter barrels will only sit over and then the pieces of wood marry up to it, I will have to use a mandrel for those. 
I could move over to using a measurement system, but I don't want to do that. I'm a lazy turner, and I'm honest about that. tell those cuts are very light you're almost not seeing anything disappear at all there you're still seeing pieces fly off so you know it's cutting you can hear it cutting but you're not seeing a band as I move it along deciding to shape that bulb now chipped out any of the ends of the tubes and continuing on. I'm not far away from starting to sand now. Add a little bit of chip out on that far end. Having a feel, seeing how many ridges I've got, and I'm liking this finish coming off the skew. Compared to the roughing gouge, I found my sanding on this was extremely less, and the finish on it also came out much nicer. You may notice there's now something new appeared. There's a nice little sap inclusion there, which has actually created quite a bit of wild grain around it. Even here, you can start to see those colored with the wild grain around it. I genuinely thought this was just a piece of tassie oak, absolutely nothing special about it. And then I sprayed the water on it and I went, oh, that's some absolutely gorgeous chatoyants. So I've now filled that in, I brushed it smooth as much as I could with my EVA foam and now I'm going to do my typical 150 through to 600. And you'll notice, compared to normal, I've spent almost no time on that. That was in real time. I am going to speed up for the rest of the sanding process because I personally find it the most boring. going across the grain and along the grain. So across the grain while the lathe is spinning and then with the grain to get rid of any of those circle marks. You'll notice in the photos later you can see it, but that's because I'm using a macro lens and to the naked eye, you can't actually see any of those circular marks. I get into the grits here, the more that chatoyance is starting to really appear. As so the finer the grit, the more it comes out, almost like a burnish, so it's adding a lot of detail. Give it a quick blow off and clear those pores out before applying some finish. Also, did you know that it helps if you grab the correct bottle of glue? This is a piece of glue that is still sealed. That's my next bottle, and not the one I need to be using today. As 
you can see that color starts to pop straight away. I will now buzz through some finish and get it done nice and quick for you. I do the first layers without any accelerator and then I do subsequent layers with accelerator. I want the first two layers to really soak in and backfill any pores that may have occurred. And as you can see that Chatoyance is becoming very, very bright. Lights and darks of the brown are standing out very nicely. So I'm only in two times speed here and you'll notice I'm spending maybe five seconds of each grit. I'll get a bit longer towards the finer grits but in the early ones, because this finish came out so nice, I was able to minimize my time actually putting some micro mesh effort into it. Moving into the final grits now, that's the second last one. As you can tell, I'm giving it a little wipe off with some paper towel just to get rid of any extra moisture and any of the loose plastic bits that may be there. And now we'll have a quick look at the final piece. And it is looking very nice indeed. Right there, I'm running my finger across the edge to make sure it's nice and flush, and it is. Now I've pulled out my polishing brush and I'm just hitting it quickly with some plastic polish. So I've got the impact driver running with the polish wheel and I've got the lathe running. And it has come out with a very, very nice finish indeed. As you can hear, I am impressed with myself. Something I haven't actually shown very often is removing the piece from the lathe. Some days it's easier than others. Today was one of the easier days. You notice that middle one's a little bit stuck. One tap and off it goes. You never want to impact the wood side. You only want to impact from the back. So having a piece of the metal there and just a quick little tap on the metal of the lathe and it just releases it again some release easier than others we're going to move into assembly and then we've got some photos so I'm pressing the clip and top of the pen on and that's only got one piece that actually presses in the bottom bit has the nib as well as the mechanism for the pen. So I start with the nib, I put that in the hole in the black portion of the pen press because then I've got the nice broad flat bit for the back and I'm going to do the same again with the mechanism. You'll notice I stop and I put the pen insert in and I check what it is doing. So. I'm like, yep, not quite far enough. Having done these a few times, I now know that I've got to go a little bit further and second time's a charm. It's better off to stop early 
and double check before you ruin things. And now we have a completed pen. If you're enjoying the content, please like, subscribe, share, and don't forget to check out Sid's Repurposing. I mainly included this clip to really show off that chatoyance as I'm rotating it. You'll see it color shift quite dramatically and it's absolutely gorgeous. Moving into some photos. How do you think I did with Sid's challenge? Noting this is just the practice. Let me know in the comments below and if you think you would like to see something done better.